begin with introductions. Mark Christie. Susan Walkie. Mitchell Moore. Brian Green. David Skirvin. Robert Landheis. And Kent Norris. Um, we are still missing several uh, of our committee members, but as, as they come, we'll uh, join them with what we're doing. Um, the first uh, order of business today is to elect uh, officers. Um, first off would be a chair. I'd like to nominate Mitch Moore. I'll second that. Okay. Any other nominations? All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Mitch Moore, you are now the chair. Now we need to elect a vice chair. I'll nominate Mark Christie. I'll second that. Any other nominations? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mark Christie is our vice chair. <clears throat> well, today is, uh, I'm going to work our way through this, the budget presentation. This is my first time doing this, as well as development of the, um, the budget. And so it wasn't done totally by me. I had a lot of help. Um, but I think that uh, it will show that we haven't made a whole lot of changes, but um, there are some. And so we'll move forward with that. Um, first of all, uh, we'll talk about the budget process. Um, uh, in uh, March through May, uh, we appointed a, a budget officer, and the budget was prepared during that time. Today is the, the normal meeting date for the budget committee. Um, we plan to take any public comment, and um, we'll... Uh, as the committee reviews things, um, we'll suggest any appropriate changes, and then we'll, at the end of the meeting, we'll make a recommendation to the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District based on, those, on today's process. Um, then in the June meeting of the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District, we'll hold our budget hearing, again receive public comment, uh, recommend for the, the budget, and then um, have any review that suggests any appropriate changes, and then we'll adopt the budget from that point. Um, we always like to start out with the foundation of what the district is, and that's our mission statement. And so the mission statement is to um, improve and maintain the water quality in Devil's Lake, improve the environment for fish, wildlife, and humans in Devil's Lake, and its watershed improve recreational opportunities in and on Devil's Lake, improve and maintain an efficient navigation through Devil's Lake, improve the economy of North Lincoln County through the restoration and maintenance of Devil's Lake, and finally to increase public awareness and public education of Devil's Lake. Mine doesn't have that. Are, are, are the monitors as yours? No, it's not working either. I can barely see it. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Usually it's monitored. Yeah, yes, right. You certainly can. <laughs> and I'll just move over a little bit. Okay. Thank you. I was thinking they just. Yeah, yeah, no, usually. <laughs> the vice chair should be stuck in the corner or whatever. <laughs> yeah. That's okay, I like it. <laughs> Not conducive to the setup's not conducive to a large <laughs> budget. Those monitors aren't rate. working over there? No, the monitors aren't at all. All right. Okay. Um, next, uh, the district established priorities, and those eight established priorities were done this last year, and they are to develop and implement a strategy for aquatic vegetation management and control to forward the septic tank revitalization 
uh, of the lake through the LID process, excuse me, uh, forward the septic tank revitalization program to promote new technology for sewering the lake through the LID process. Uh, increase the district's engagement and communications with its stakeholders. Obtain multi-year permit and dredge the D River on the east side of Highway 101. Continue to obtain a permit for the future use of sterile grass carp. Update the Devil's Lake plan to reflect current priorities and projects. And finally, to continue and enhance efforts to identify and measure sources of nutrients. Other programs and activities that we engage in um, are listed here. These are a scattering of what those are. Um, we uh, produce the Devil's Lake Radio on 1610 AM. We do internet streaming of meetings, government cable access on channel four. We have an email service monthly meeting announcements and staff reports, quarterly e-newsletter, and we maintain the DLWID website. Um, we attend conferences and trainings, namely uh, North American Lake Management Society. Um, that's a yearly conference in the fall. Um, Oregon Lakes Association, and we're also part of the Special Districts Association of Oregon that puts on trainings for the board as well as our lake manager. We also participate in uh, emergency preparedness and um, have had in the past an internship program. Um, other programs include uh, lake management, which um, the D River Dam and Recreational Water Rights Administration. Um, we provide uh, assistance in emergency dredging of the D River on the west side of uh, the bridge in case it, the river gets clogged. Um, and we're currently pursuing a permit for the dredging of the D River on the east side of 101. Outreach programs include Devil's Lake Revival, Earth Day, Get the Let Out, Lake Steward Award, and the Senior Fair. Additionally, property and planning issues, uh, we work with wetland removal and fill application review. We also um, engage in a safety program, our Save Our Shorelines program and signage, as well as participate in the total daily, excuse me, total maximum daily load stakeholder process, which we are part of the meetings that take place there. <clears throat> we also are um, engaged in uh, water quality monitoring programs, including bacterial source tracking, chemical parameters, database maintenance, E. coli monitoring, harmful algal bloom surveillance, and physical parameters. <clears throat> Major variances in uh, budget from last year to this year. Uh, last year, uh, we uh, budgeted for a complete, uh, a bid for a complete job um, uh, for uh, the Devil's Lake, construction of a, of a project and operation of that aeration project. Um, funding included improvement fund balance, uh, large grant, planned grant um, applications, and a large loan. As we look toward um, this year, um, we are continuing down those paths, but uh, those things were not completed this last year. Instead, we're looking at an overview study of the lake, which we're currently engaged in, engineering, planning, and funding of a possible uh, aeration system. And uh, in that funding, um, we're looking at a portion of the improvement fund, no grants or no loans for this next year. Now, in the, in the process of putting together the budget, um, we worked closely with the Oregon Department of Revenue to see that our budget uh, process and the way we present our uh, budget is uh, up to current Oregon law. And with regard to um, looking through that process with the Oregon Department of, of Revenue, they made the following recommendations and we adopted those for um, our budget year. Uh, 
we first of all abandoned the use of placeholders in our budget. We updated all the budget forms. The budget now is characterized by an organizational unit. Um, we identified items not allocated to the organizational unit. And finally, we created a true reserve fund for the vehicle and boat um, replacement. <clears throat> All of these were done by taking a look at the, uh, how we spent money on a monthly basis, and we based uh, our estimates based on those monthly estimates. Ken, I, I've got a question. Should I wait till you're done? Or? No, that's fine. Well, yeah, it's just um, about the uh, recommendations from uh, Oregon Department of Revenue. Um, I've, always, I've always been a fan of using the uh, the placeholders only because I thought uh, it might help us avoid a supplemental budget process in the future. But I, and I acknowledge you probably have learned something that, that I didn't know about why we shouldn't be using those or better not to use them or what's the reason to not use them? Um, I, I, we can go, I believe, and... Mitch, Mitch talked to those. He helped me put together this, and he did some um, conversations with them. Can, could you explain that a little bit? Well, Brian, I actually uh, I went to a full day training on uh, on the government budget process that uh, was recommended, and um, had a long conversation. And apparently, there was something that changed in the training methods that got a bunch of uh, uh, entities thinking that this was a good idea to use placeholders because they said just about two years ago, it kind of cropped up two, three years ago. Um, they uh, don't feel that it's a good use. What they say is if, if a category doesn't exist, you can't transfer funds into it without going into a supplementary budget. But a supplementary budget really is a pretty easy process. It really only requires, it's the same as moving that in in one meeting except that you have to do two public notices for that meeting you actually have to do a hearing so really it's just instead of just publishing notice on the website you have to publish notice on the website in the paper if you were to do it so it's a fairly simple process but they specifically stated that um, that you shouldn't be using placeholders like that I mean I had um, that that was just a specific recommendation so the one dollar placeholders and they, they're, train, they're, they're uh, changing their training um, to, I see, because they actually talked like that in the training, and that's why I asked the question. Um, it was kind of like, uh, so should we be using placeholders for that? And that was the answer was, no, that's a misconception, and you shouldn't be using placeholders. So, we, so that was I mean, their recommendation. It's, in the end, uh, it, most of the, for one, uh, um, if it's a revenue source, there's absolutely no reason to use any kind of a placeholder or forecast revenues that, that might be because you can accept any revenue without a supplemental budget. It's only uh, appropriating funds that, that you would have to, to do anything with your budget at all. So for instance, if you've got a grant, um, you would um, be able to accept that grant without changing your budget. And in fact, likely it would be a specific purpose grant like for an aeration project and you could actually appropriate that and use it without changing your budget as well because the grant was for that specific purpose. So the board could just do it with a resolution. So it just amounts to increasing that line item based on the amount of the grant? You, you, don't, even, you don't even have to do that. You just say we accept the grant. We'll take, you can take anybody's money donation, you name it, uh, without changing your budget. Uh, that's totally acceptable. Just with board resolution, say you want to give me a million dollars, I'll take it. Uh, and if it's a grant which is for a specific purpose, which most of the grants would be that we, we would be getting into, you can appropriate the use of those for that purpose without changing your budget. Well, now they said you can even do it into the second year. They said if. If the funds last more than two two years, they probably be looking for you to put that into your budget. Okay, so so it's going to be a big matters for uh, for this year. But mm -hmm. say we did the budget the same way next year, and we got a loan for uh, or a grant for aeration. Mm -hmm. There just doesn't have to be a supplemental budget process. It, it, it doesn't. Although it's, there's nothing wrong if you if you if you actually uh, anticipate getting a grant, you certainly could put it into the budget. But let's just say a grant fell into our lap this year and we don't have it in the budget. There's there's absolutely no reason we can't accept those funds 
and and, um, and actually appropriate. And all, and all without a supplemental budget process. Without a supplemental yeah. budget. Okay. Process. Great, that answers my question. Thanks. And then we also submitted our old budget and what we had done in the past to them to review. And, and so these were the recommendations that they made to us to make these changes. Right. Yeah, I see that. I just wonder why. Yeah. So, hey, so we're, uh, while we're on that topic, what is the <coughs> trigger for uh, the requirement to uh, hold that public hearing for a supplemental budget as far as percentage of expenditure what what would that trigger be as a percentage of our budget well I think in this button what we've been operating on in the past for the size of our budget is about five thousand dollars if you if you are um, moving more than five thousand dollars from one it hasn't been appropriated in your current budget okay and that's what you guys have been doing Third, third okay, but, but I understand you say that doesn't that five thousand dollar limit, whatever it might be, doesn't apply in the case of a of a grant. Any of the revenue the side, yeah. Any any of the resources, it doesn't apply. But it also doesn't apply to spending the grant either, right? I mean, what you just if it's a specific purpose grant, yeah. Right. yeah. If the grant comes with it's to be used for this purpose, then um, once you accept it, basically. But if it was some. If somebody came to you with a donation of a hundred thousand dollars and said, "Do whatever you want with it," then um, you could accept the donation. But if you were to uh, decide how you wanted to spend it, you would have to do a supplemental budget because it's not specified in the donation. So, with okay. a grant, it would most likely be specified. That was what they recommended. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, and just to clarify, mine was more along the lines of not a grant, but if we had something else come up that wasn't appropriated in the budget, um, outside of money being received, what's that trigger to trigger that um, public? Right. And honestly, I'm, I think it's probably it's probably written in here. I don't know, but I it, I, I just remember that being five thousand dollars around, no, uh, based perfect. on the scale of our of the budget. Yeah. Uh, thanks. I'll, I'll read this because yeah. right. I remember reading something about that. No, that's it. Yeah. Thank you. But it, feel, please, anybody, feel free to ask questions, um, interrupt at any time. <clears throat> All right. If we look at a year in brief, um, the general fund, we expect projected 3% increase in funding. Um, personal services uh, are we projected uh, equal uh, materials and services, a slight decrease. Um, we don't have any debt service. We have a small contingency set aside. Uh, we expect to make some capital purchases of a computer and printer. Um, we're going to transfer funds um, uh, from, the, uh, in, from the improvement fund into the new transportation fund and we'll have uh, those things reserved for the future. Um, uh, in the improvement fund, we're looking at uh, an aeration oxidation project, um, vegetation management, sewer and SOS programs continuing, fish and wildlife uh, uh, grants, um, monitoring continuing, uh, recreation, uh, capital purchase, we're still budgeting for grass carp, um, we're still looking at transfers to the, again, to the new transportation fund for the, the boat and um, vehicle uh, purchase, eventual purchase, and then, of course, reserve fund for the future. Let's take a look at the general fund. <clears throat> general front fund, if we look at that, um, we will... Our sources of uh, capital are net working capital, current taxes, previous taxes, the UEBF, the, <laughs> the UEBFB fund, <laughs> and excuse me, and then of course a small amount of interest. In previous budgets, we also had grants and donations as part of the general fund, and. General fund resources, if we look at our uh, 
LGIP uh, general fund balance um, and TLC checking account, our TLC money market account, our TLC share account, um, anticipated revenues and anticipated figures. We have a net working capital of $114,871. Uh, if we look at then previously levied taxes of $6,500, um, the interest on our LGIP uh, from levied taxes at, as an estimate of $720, um, an unappropriated ending fund balance of $100,000, no grants, no donations, gives us um, a total uh, resources except taxes to be levied of $222,091. Um, the current year taxes expected to be received are $235,611, giving us a total uh, resources of $457,702 in our general fund. Can't, should that... Uh that date at the top be as of March 7, 2016? Yeah. Yes, thank you. I mean, that might be a problem for, you know, I don't know, just the... Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I didn't catch that. Thank you. That would be an easy one to fix. The Department of Revenue gets picky about these forms, so... Yes, they do. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. This is why I'm... That's why we're doing this. Does everything else seem to be okay here? I think that's it. General fund requirements are LB30 form. <clears throat> uh, again, personnel services of $85,321. Material and material services, $111,161. Capital outlay um, of $3,840. Uh, give us total allocated uh, uh, for district operations of about $200,322. <clears throat> In that, we'll have interfund transfers of $105,000, contingency of $5,000, unappropriated ending found, uh, fund balance of $100, and then reserved for future expenditures of a little over $47,000 giving us a total um, re requirements not allocated of $257,380. We add those two up and we end up with $457,702. Of those, um, broke down into a pie chart. Um, materials and services will be approximately 25% of our general fund. The transfer to the improvement fund of 28%. The um, UEFB fund of 24%. Capital outlay, 1%. Personnel services, 21%. And then a small contingency of 1%. Now, as we look at that materials and services um, section of our budget, uh, you'll see that accounting uh, is a little more than we've done in the past of $7,690. Consulting of $12,792. Contracting, um, we just put that in there as a small amount in, in case we need something, and I'll talk about that a little later. Elections are also part of that. Equipment purchase. Um, we didn't do any uh, erosion and sediment uh, spent expenditures last year. We don't expect to this year. Um, of course, our insurance and bonds of $2,970. Lake management um, would be uh, a little over seven thousand. Excuse me, seven thousand eight hundred dollars. Um, legal, three thousand four hundred seventy dollars. Our monitoring program, which we send out sampling, although it's going to be done um, by volunteers this year, of $13,873. Um, nutrient control, again, um, 
we have no didn't expend any dollars last year. We don't expect to this year. Um, office operations, we'll talk about those of thirty-one thousand four hundred eighteen dollars. Public relations, which includes our newly formed committees of twenty-two thousand and eight dollars. Training and education of a thousand dollars. Transportation of four thousand. Uh, five hundred and ten dollars and then vegetation management um, we don't expect any this time so Kent can we go back to uh -huh. the top which is accounting and I want to <clears throat> I want to read something here um, it's uh, on page 16 it's in reference to accounting it includes the cost of financial review associated filing fees bookkeeping and costs related to doing payroll the cost for review, previously a full audit, continued to rise. The district entered into a three-year contract in 2015 for the review, which was budgeted at 4000 Payroll and bookkeeping costs are expected to rise as the district intends to outsource the monthly bookkeeping, providing the separations of duty required by generally accepted accounting principles. Overall, the annual appropriation for accounting uh, $7,690 for 2016-2017. The reason I read that and the question that I have and I would like to uh, have you have our new lake manager research is, you know, we pay a lot of money for, you know, this service to ensure that we are doing it properly based on general, you know, accounting, standard accounting principles. and. And the biggest issue I have here is we've we had a previous problem with separations of duties and powers. And in my opinion, and based on what I've seen with my 15 years on the school board reviewing, you know, $33 million budgets, you know, if there are if if there are issues with in respect to general accounting principles, they are brought up in the audit, and then those issues are addressed internally and corrected. It doesn't appear, because I look back through the reviews for the last couple of years, there was no mention of separation of duties and powers. And I, want, I would like that question asked of our accounting firm, why that wasn't caught or mentioned in their audit. Yeah, it wasn't mentioned um, on how we've done things in the past, how that affected things. But, you know, as we've made some changes over the last couple months and we've seen you know it was obvious our checking account um, had, had when I took over it had three signers and um, one of them was dead another one we didn't from a long time ago and then the third one was our lake manager um, and those things became apparent that, that something happened that well, those are really problematic right and so we, we hopefully Oh, no, I know we're moving forward, but, right. but we paid that company a service to audit and tell us if we were doing things right. None of that that I saw was ever noted. And as a budget committee member, I would like to know why it wasn't noted. Okay. So check on that. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. And so we're uh, in, in previous budgets, why, why this is uh, raised or increased is because um, our our lake manager did um, all of the bookkeeping and stuff along, and that took up a major part of uh, his time, and we're looking at um, trying to shift that to outsource. outsource that, that makes right. sense. And then that should take care of that. Yeah, that issue. That issue, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So moving on down to lake level management, total of 7,800 appropriated. I mean, my simplistic idea of lake level management now is we keep we keep the boards at nine five three and and hope that the lake stays at that level. So what's the cost? Well, we also have the all. emergency dredging and all that that we do in association with that. Right. Okay. The, the other part of that, Brian, is it's that um, we're, we're we look at not only the emergency, but as we look to dredge um, the east side. Of the, of the, of the yeah, west, uh, ex, right. the yeah, west uh, side of the dam, yeah, or the east side of the dam, east yeah, side of the dam, right. right? That we we expect that there's going to be some 
costs involved with that. that okay. That, but that's that that's actually an improvement fund. I should have read the whole paragraph. <laughs> that, that's that's actually an improvement fund. The um, the the dredging of uh, of the uh, east side. The, there's seven thousand in there for um, for the emergency dredging. Yeah, I see. And it, and it often isn't spent. I mean, I, I don't think there's any emergency dredging this year, was it? I don't think there was. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. I, I see 5,000 as emergency, I mean 2,000 as emergency and 5,000 for permitting costs. All right, you're right. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. So that would be the permitting of that. And just, just a big shout out again to uh, one of our uh, board members, Bill Sexton, who has graciously donated what used to be a uh, uh, line item in our budget to uh, take manage that lake level and um, so a shout out to him that's awesome and we appreciate it a ton. right yeah that saved us quite a bit of money right yep. there so and he continues to, to do, that. do that every yep. day Very good. are there other questions all right looking at capital outlay um, we are in my opinion <laughs> Uh, in desperate need of a, a, another um, desktop computer and currently the color printer scanner is, is very difficult to use. I've Since I've been doing this for two months I've been doing most of my printing at home on mine um, because of the lack of, of, um, of uh, consistency of being able to use the current printer and such and so and I can testify that that's horrible. I was in there trying to help Ken out, and it it needs to be replaced as well as the computer. And there needs to be a little bit of furniture that actually is designed to put that stuff on. Yes. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Can I ask when the current computer was purchased? We we bought a new laptop this year, um, oh. and mm -hmm. the the problem with What's currently taking place is where most of our our oldest um, computer, desktop computer, it's. I know we've had predictions that it's ready to crash, and um, although we've downloaded everything off of it, we the the two computers aren't talking. The new computer we can't print off of, so we have to take documents off of it on a thumb drive, take it to the other one, and so there needs to be some reworking of. Yeah. Of our office. So, is it several years old? It is. Yeah, yeah the desktop's been around for quite a while. Yeah. Thank you. I, 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 and it has, we have so much data storage um, that we really need to protect that. Now we're moved to the improvement fund. <clears throat> um, our improvement fund resources as of March 7th. Um, it's actually that's another one we need to get 2016. Um, we have an existing account balance of $395,850. Um, plus, again, those are revenues by that should be those. It should be changed. Less expenses um, gives us three hundred ninety-five thousand eight hundred fifty dollars still in, in our expected balance for the end of our fiscal year. Um, again, we're going to um, expect transfers into the fund from the general fund of a hundred thousand dollars interest. Um, of about $2,000 or $1,979. Again, we did not get any grants, either secured or unsecured loans, or have any donations for this year. So we end up with total resources of $497,829. Given that, um, we our improvement fund resources were uh, receiving 20% uh, transfers in, uh, investment income of very little of 0.1%, and then carryover of 79.9%. In 
improvement fund requirements. The fund requirements are personnel services, we have none. Materials and services, $190,620. And then capital outlay of four, excuse me, $7,480, giving us the total allocated um, to the district for district operations of $198,100. Um, then we add in our interfund transfers of $37,500, uh, reserve for exp uh, future expenditures of $262,229, giving us a total not allocated resources of $299,729. Adding those two numbers together, we come up with our total requirements of, again, $497,829. Now we move to projects. Um, next year for projects, uh, we, of course, last night voted to continue on with our uh, pursuit of, of an aeration oxidation plan um, for the um, elimination or uh, redu reduction in our um, harmful algal bloom problem that we've experienced uh, occasionally over the years. And so um, we are planning on consulting fees of 120,000, no equipment or contracting fees for that. So while we're on that topic, um, our approved allocation for those services is 99.5, is that correct? That's correct. So is there any issue with having $120,000 in the budget um, when the approved amount is 99.5 due to the direct appointment? So I think as long as we don't contract with the same group and extend the value of the existing contract, we, we can do whatever, you know, it's a bucket of moment, money for a purpose. No, I get it. So as long as we're contracting with somebody else or have a subsequent contract, then we're still under the threshold for that. Fun. According to the narrative, the additional twenty thousand is for um, permitting, permitting, and right away. Oh, perfect. Uh, which was yeah. explicitly excluded from the contract. Okay, that's awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Should we be saying that the? Uh, I forget what the statute says. If it has to be less than a hundred thousand or a hundred thousand or less, but maybe that number should be ninety-nine five and a per additional twenty thousand five hundred. To address the permitting and rights of way required, just throwing it out there. Um, I mean, the contract says 99.5, so I assume that that meets the legal requirement uh, and what we put in the. You know, and I, I have a suggestion also along those lines that Brian mentioned. Uh, I think it would be appropriate to. Um, direct Tom to do a little bit of due diligence on that topic and if the budget needs to be adjusted to reflect what Brian's chatting about just so that we're doing it the right way. Um, Tom, I would imagine, would be able to, to in short order, uh, get that determined and then we can make an adjustment prior to uh, budget adoption. Well, I mean, wouldn't it be as easy as just changing the the language We're to just say it now. here? Yeah, because we got to make a recommendation the at the end of this meeting. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, that would work. Just change the paragraph. Ninety-nine five. Ninety-nine five and twenty fifty. Yeah. 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 We no, can be, that. That's perfect. Then we're then we're gonna get you. Everybody. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Right. Uh, vegetation management. We um, again. Eventually, um, we have uh, $15,480 set aside for a uh, grass carp consultant and uh, placing grass carp in the lake if, we, if that need be in the future. So we've kept those funds there. Um, septic and sewer. Um, 
the district continues to support sewering the uh, the lake in order to reap the long-term benefits of uh, of the reduction of chemicals in into the lake. So um, we've set aside thirty thousand dollars for possible incentive grants, uh, an inspection program, and education and outreach for that. And that, that keeps with what we've done in the past. Save Our Shorelines this year has been um, reduced somewhat. Um, we've cut that in half. Uh, previous budgets reflected $15,000, which would equate to uh, 20 projects. This year, the Save Our Shorelines program uh, is goal of 10 projects to be completed and a total of $7,500 to be expended based on that. Um, education and communication. Um, uh, again, uh, we're going to set aside uh, about $3,000 or $3,000 uh, to update our communications plan and implement a new plan. Uh, fish and wildlife. Um, the district uh, one month ago um, increased its total grant to the Salmon Drift Creek Watershed Council for um, Thompson Creek uh, culvert replacement as a matching grant. Um, if they happen to receive those grants to replace, I think, nine out of the ten or almost all of the culverts on Thompson Creek. So we'll keep that in the can I just chime in real quick on this one? I just wanted to reiterate because I didn't get an opportunity at the board meeting but um, when this topic came up. But I think that's a great use of uh, district matching funds because it d directly impacts the quality of water in the lake. So if it didn't directly impact quality of water in the lake, I don't think it would be as good of a wise of use of district funds, but it does, and I, I think this is a, a good one. So hopefully um, they get the grants and we can contribute. The My matching. recollection is that they were hopeful that they would know in the fall. Is that correct, Brian? Do you remember? Was it October? That's what, the, that's what they're hopeful of. Is. Yeah, do, you, do you know if that, that system incorporates the, um, what do you call them, the stormwater retention basins? I don't believe uh, so. It's just uh, replacing it most. I believe most of those culverts are collapsing or collapsed. And I mean, maybe you can't do that in the stream. I don't know, but it seems like it wouldn't be a bad idea. And somebody I think they're just fish passage is what they're after. But yeah, but that's a. The, I guess the retention yeah. pond might be down, farther down. That is problematic. And that can be. I'll just throw it. You know, that can be part of a sewer project. It's just, well, it is part of the LIB. I went down and looked at it. It's pretty. I get it how it works. It could actually slow sediment uh, down from going into the lake. So as we look at cater categorizing um, the different areas of the LB11, um, again, we have personnel services. We don't have any money um, set aside for that. Materials and services of a hundred ninety thousand six hundred twenty dollars capital outlay of seven thousand four hundred eighty dollars uh, transfers out of this fund of thirty seven thousand five hundred and then reserved in the fund of two hundred and sixty two thousand two hundred twenty nine dollars making it a total of four hundred ninety seven thousand eight hundred and twenty nine dollars Now we're going to take a look at the transportation fund. Um, transportation fund is new, and the board will need to make a resolution for this at the June meeting. Um, but it was um, brought to us by the Oregon Department of Revenue that if we're setting aside monies for the replacement, possible replacement of a vehicle and a boat, that should be set aside in a special fund. So that's why we've created the transportation fund. Um, uh, and so uh, what we did was we took what monies we've been currently setting aside for that and then um, added to that for the eventual creation of this fund. Um, 
And so what we'll do is um, the board will need to make a resolution at its June meeting um, to create this fund. And then we'll continue to, um, as we go from fiscal year to fiscal year, to um, set aside monies in that specific fund so that when it comes time to um, need to purchase those, to replace the boat and the, the automobile, that we can do that if we choose to do that at this time. And you know how I feel about that. I know that. I think we should discuss whether or not we even need to have a boat. So, or 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 a truck for yeah, for that. You're exactly you're 100 percent right because that that is where I was going to go. I really think in not necessarily in this budget process, but at a future board meeting, maybe that's you know one of the list of items that you have uh, Tom take a look at, depending on you know order of priority. But uh, I mean, for that, what, that's definitely one based on usage. For what uh, we use it for, we should be able to rent a boat. You could go need. to Noel and rent a boat from him, and then you don't have the trailer storage, and then you pay, you know, the lake manager, whoever's doing that, a stipend for his, yeah, for his. And he could, he could put the logo as uh, on you his have magnetic too. logos yeah. for him. Yeah. yeah, so he can take it off during the day if he wants. So yeah, I I agree with you 100. percent well, we when, gotta buy him a trailer hitch, right? Yeah. One one thing for sure is that, um, it, looking at it, it seems like we're getting very close to that reserve being large enough. So it's not like you're going to want to put more away over time. I mean, you're, I mean, and then I'm not quite sure the boat that they have that seems like it's probably got a lot of years of. I mean, the boat's not going to wear out. No, the, boat's the, not the motor out. might, right. um, but, um, and I know it was. Just recently overhauled um, by um, Blair Repair. So yeah, we, I think we spent three hundred and sixty dollars to repair it yeah. um, this year. So, and so that reserve may last a, or be there for a really, really long time. But as far as budgeting process, um, that was another one of the things that uh, they caught was just um, that we were appropriating funds for that, and just showing a growing appropriation, which would indicate we were going to actually spend it in the year. And they said, that's, that's not the way to do it. You need to put it in the reserve fund. So it's up to you guys whether you want to put it there or not. Oh, I, I'm, yeah. I'm fine with it. I think it's perfect for this year. But I think going forward, we need that. The board should discuss the strategy on on vehicles and what we want to do. I agree. So well, everybody agrees. <laughs> So anyhow, how that plays out then in the um, in the transportation fund? Um, again, we need to change our March 2015 and June 2015 dates. Should be easy fixes. Um, we would. Uh, Transfer from the general fund, $5,000. That'd be $2,500 each um, uh, for replacement for this next fiscal year. And then um, total transfers up, up to that point that we've set aside were $37,500, making it total resources in the transportation fund of $42,500. Again, um, by pie chart, we're looking at transfers from the general fund of, of 18,000 and transfers from the improvement fund of 80, excuse me, 18 percent, and transfers from the improvement fund of 82 um, percent. That would give us in the in the um, currently in the transportation fund of 37,500. And then we transfer in the extra 5,000 for this year. In summary, um, resources. We have a beginning balance, a net working capital of $610,721. We don't have any uh, fees, licenses, or permit or other charges, way to get um, resources, no grants, um, again, no revenue or bonds or other debt. Um, Interfund transfers and reimbursements were of 105,000. Um, all other resources except taxes were $9,199. And our current property taxes are $235,611, giving us a total resources of 
excuse me, $960,531. If we look back at um, requirements by classification, which we've changed to, personal services, we kept the same at $85,321. Materials and services, $301,781. Capital outlay of $11,320. We don't have any debt service. Interfund transfers of $147,500. Set aside contingencies of $5,000. Um, no special reserves that we set aside and our um, unappropriated ending fund balance of uh, 409,000, 609,000 gives us, again, $960,531. Financial summary, district operations are 6,000, excuse me, 698,151,000 ,000, and then not allocated to an organizational unit, that's our savings, of 262,380 dollars gives us a total fund working capital of 960 500 dollars did we I know I went through things very quickly I explained it I think pretty well in the in the budget itself um, we need to make some date changes from what I could see and some verbiage um, changes. And some verbiage right. changes. Um, so those date changes are on page 12, 19, and 25. And the verbiage change is on page 20. Unless I missed something. I think that's correct. And on 19, I think there's there's three date changes. Yeah. You got, okay. 12, right. 19, and 25. And then the no, no, but I mean on page 19 itself, there's like right, three. right, like, right. Yeah, I just, like I just referenced the page. Yeah, I think there's like okay. four on the page. Is there? I see. Is there four? Yeah, there's one in the paragraph and right. three in the table. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. All right, gotta get that. So. And then was there oh. other date changes that we missed along the way? Is there anything else? On 12, we have one. I just, I would open up your file, just do a search for 2015 and see. Just okay. And then, and then yeah. just look the context of it and make the changes appropriate. All right. And you should be able to find all of them pretty quickly that way. Very good. Any other comments? No, I, I, thought, I, I thought it was a pretty easy read. Pretty straightforward. I, mean, not, I had help. <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> Thank you, helpers, for your help. You did help. a great job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, noted, it is 14 pages shorter. Uh -huh. yeah. You guys did a great job. That, you know, that's a well put together budget. It's, you know, I think the verbiage was concise this year. It's been a little verbose. And, previous years so yeah. yeah I think it gets to the point of what it's for rather than all this other fluff around it so it's good is there any other questions or comments from the budget committee I don't know. I'll make a motion we recommend adopting the budget with the changes identified I second it and I guess because I'm Chair, I should say, are there any? Is there any discussion? Um, we do need to uh, adopt the tax levy too. Do you want to do that a separate motion? I think we. I think that we do that at, in the June meeting. We do that in the June meeting. Right. Right. I think the board has to. That's the board. Well, I think we need to recommend. Okay. Yeah, that would be fine. Yeah, I think you're right. So do you want to make the motion? Adopt. Amend the motion to include the tax levy, or would you sure, I'll make a motion that we include the. Or that we, but we recommend adopting the budget and the tax levy 
as proposed with the changes identified. I think we should specify the two different tax levies. Do you want me to read them? For both in the, the and inside out. and outside. I think yeah. that has to be specifically if you want, stated. Just give me that. Zero point two four nine nine inside the watershed and zero point one two eight zero outside the watershed. Thanks. You're welcome. I, and I've got a question about that. I was looking at that um, at LB fifty, and especially the mm -hmm. outside the watershed. But it doesn't really say that it's outside the watershed, but inside the city of Lincoln City. So, I mean, is that a problem? Is is this the LB the same form LB fifty we've used in past years? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Well, it's a new form, but it's exactly the same. Purpose. But it, but it, there's nothing about. That's how the uh, county refers to it. It's just inside okay. and outside. They don't. They don't. Specify much. Okay. All right. I just. But we can. These forms know, make for me the nervous. So. It is. <laughs> it's an updated form, and I second the, the whatever happened there. <laughs> Our dual motion. <laughs> Sorry, I thought we were in discussion, so I have it. Okay, so any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? There isn't anything else left on the agenda, Ken. Public comment? Do you have any comments? I would like Come up to the mic microphone, Miles. But we have the communications has quite a bit of money in it. Yeah, I, what, was it seven thousand dollars or something? Uh, I it was, thought it was more than that. Eleven thousand eight ten in outreach. That was close to. And um, six thousand five hundred under public relations. For yeah. So. This is we Miles Schlesinger, whose address is 212 Southeast Keel Avenue. My thinking is that Dave's committee should be responsible for uh, all events that we want to have for the economic benefit of Lincoln City uh, uh, and fulfilling our mission statement in that regard and I don't know that the neighborhood association is going to put on the fireworks display uh, over the fourth but I think that is something that uh, special events should be involved with uh, for the benefit of tourism on July 4th weekend and uh, for the local community because those fireworks are super then there's uh, other events that we might put out the seed money for like the my fishing derby that I'm going to suggest uh, to the committee we already have the jet ski committee so that's three events that uh, we should be looking at funding for the community but getting some a lot of support from the Visitors and Convention Bureau, which I think uh, can aid us in making a really successful off-season event. So I'm wondering if three thousand dollars. I think it was more than that. Is that. Yeah, I think it was more than that also. And, the, and just to answer your question, Miles, on the fireworks, the fireworks are a go, and that'll be another great day and a great event so along along with the boat parade i just yep. filed for the uh, permit yep. for that with the oregon uh, marine board so well actually it's at the lincoln county sheriff's office right now but but, but um just reading from the detail here and i don't know if it's enough or not but um under public relations there's about um 6755 dollars for a variety of Things including the community grant and um, advertising, um, but and then under outreach, there's eleven thousand eight hundred and ten for revival and senior fair. The things that the district has done, it certainly doesn't have a lot of new things. But then there is five thousand dollars in the contingency, which is ten times the contingency. I mean, the maximum that you could put in was five thousand, I think, and. Um, 
So, so then we could afford to pay the motel accommodations if we got the Portland uh, jet ski uh, and the uh, jump uh, to put on shows for the revival if we make it more like the old car festival was or musicians on uh, uh, Sunday night. And that's the kind of thing I'm thinking. Well, and I'm, I'm thinking that as the the Events and Communication Committee gets formed and started, they're going to come up with all sorts of ideas. And yeah, we'll have to uh, I would hope so. Yeah. Yeah. I also, just to note on the revival, I mean, 6000 was budgeted last year. The, the amount spent was 2198 So there's was a that, 2000, 2000 was spent, but there's 6000 budgeted, according to the... I don't think... think it I thought the... Uh, Consultant that, that put that on. Yeah, that was much more expensive. Yeah. Well, it didn't get booked. They didn't get booked as the revival. Okay, it was booked as something else then. So we do have a, we have a bucket. We have some. Okay. We have some funds to work with. So good. good. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Well, it's a chairman. Right there, chairman. Any any further business before us? Motion to adjourn. And thank you all for coming, and the, especially uh, Susan. And is it help me with your first name? Robert. Roger. I'm sorry. Robert. Roger. Robert. Robert. I'm sorry. Robert. Thank you for coming and helping us these last couple of years. I appreciate it a lot. And, all right. The thank you. Is out, Mr. Vice Chair. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. I thought you would die to do that. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It was pretty ginger. Um, I was on the city budget committee and I'm now on city council. Right. Yeah. And uh, good job, yeah. team. He asked about the percent. Oh, that was quick. Awesome. I know that. Um, now I'm back to work. All right. Yep. Well, no, I gotta work. I gotta work. I, I was working at six this morning. So, so the budget hearing, I think we're gonna try and start at five o'clock, but you don't need to be there unless you really want to. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that under advice.